it's Jazz and this is Wildlife Matters. I've gotten snake bites many times. Ooh. I've never had a venomous snake bite but I've been bitten by different kinds of non-venomous snakes and there's a stigma that always comes with any kind of snake bite whether it be venomous or non-venomous and it causes a lot of people to panic because let's face it society really loves to demonize snakes <laughs> But really, all snakes want to do is live their lives in peace. And even though in the future we will be doing an episode about venomous snake bites, this episode in particular is about non-venomous snake bites. Because if I feel like I always have to say this, but not all snakes are venomous. And therefore, not all snake bites are venomous bites. So whether you're a keeper or not, whether you work with snakes or not, whether you're afraid of them or not, you know, this video is very important because there are just so many misconceptions about snakes. And these are tips that will come in handy if ever you find yourself or someone that you know encountering a snake bite from a non-venomous snake. Tip number one, invest in a snake hook. Snake hooks will be your best friend. A lot of keepers in our country have the thinking that snake hooks are for cowards, but actually they're not. And this is a tip that's mostly for people who actually work with snakes because if you're working with snakes, snake hooks will be your best friend because snake hooks are actually really handy especially when dealing with bigger types of snakes. You can use snake hooks to protect you from getting bitten, to pick up the snake, or even to train it to know whether it's time to eat or it's time to be handled. Never underestimate the power of your snake hook. So number two, let's talk about two types of bites. The food bite and the defensive bite. Not all snake bites are gonna be defensive bites. Some bites are gonna be food bites as a food response, which is when they mistake you for food. You gonna come out? Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well. Need a hand? No. Uh, I'm gonna have my crystal. Hopefully. <laughs> Should I continue? But this is not to say that they consider you, a human being, as food. What I'm saying is, these snakes just mistook you as food. There are a lot of reasons why they could mistake you for food. One of them would be if you previously held their prey and you forgot to wash your hands, then they will smell that off of you and of course decide to bite you because they recognize their prey through scent. Another reason would be if you came onto them in their cage and you kind of like caught them by surprise because sometimes when you just grab them and, and they're hungry, they'll mistake you for food. One way to avoid this is actually if you feed them in a different place. But that's not to say that you'll never ever get a food bite. So really, when you're keeping snakes, accidents like this can be avoided but they're still bound to happen. So it's really important that you know what you're supposed to do whenever you encounter a bite from your pet snake. Defensive bites are usually mistaken for aggressive bites because really, not all snakes are aggressive. A lot of snakes are just really more on the defensive side. These are the kinds of bites that they take to protect themselves from you, whom they see as a potential threat. You can usually tell if it's about to defensive bite you when the snake curls up the upper half of its body in the shape of an S. That means it's getting ready to strike. Just remember, an S-shaped body means that it's ready to strike. S equals strike. Usually, snakes will let go after a bite like this, and that's why people also refer to it as tagging. There it is. See, she didn't hang on. Just tag me. Because it's just like a warning bite, and they're just telling you to back off. But with food bites, they do have the tendency to kind of coil their body around you because there's more muscle contraction and bodily pressure involved. So when that happens, what do you do? Point number three is when you're bitten, don't panic and remain calm. Do not force your way out. Ow! Ooh. Did you get hurt? You're bleeding! Yeah, it's okay. Our first instinct would probably be to panic and to try to immediately get it off, but most of the time this will just actually bring more harm for you and the snake. If it starts to coil up, you can gently uncoil it, but remember, be gentle, breathe, and relax. Number four, spray Listerine or vodka. A lot of the times I just relax and breathe and wait for it to let go, but if that doesn't work, a trick of the trade you can actually use is to keep a water bottle with Listerine or vodka and some people even use hand sanitizers and you can spray that on the mouth of your snake. Just spray a little bit and that should be enough to get the snake to let go. This works a lot of the times, but in the rare instance that it doesn't, you can use your snake hook or a plastic card to gently, and I say gently, unwind its mouth from that part of your body. 
and you want to make sure that you're not forcing it because you can actually get its teeth stuck on you. Number five, it's not as bad as it looks. Snake bites can get nasty, but they will always visually appear worse than they actually should. And hear me out on this, okay? Because snakes have anticoagulants in their saliva. And anticoagulants are actually something that keeps your blood from clotting. So when they bite you, their saliva, since it prevents you from blood clot, will get you to keep on bleeding more than you actually should. Look at all that blood. Again, I think it was probably my fault, not blaming the snake. But yeah, if ever you get bitten, just remain calm. Remain calm like I did. I did not panic or anything. I just told them to get the mouthwash just in case. But I was able to get her to let go using the snake pump. Everything's fine. So this is what happened. My retic bit me in the face. I'm gonna have to clean this up. But before we go on, let me give you guys a disclaimer that I'm not trying to romanticize snake bites. And neither am I trying to generalize them because there really are instances with really bad bites, whether it's a food response or a defensive bite. But what's important is that we don't end up panicking or scaring ourselves more than we really should be. Number six, snakes are not for everyone. So if you're planning to keep them, make sure that you're up for this. Do not get a snake just because it's cool. I've had friends who got snakes and after their snake bit them, they didn't want them anymore. And they decided to give them away. But even dogs play bite sometimes. So if you're not up for it, then please opt for another pet instead. So I hope you learned a lot of things from today's episode. And to end, I just want to say please don't ever blame your snake for just being a snake. Snakes are not evil and they're not out to get you. Snakes are just snakes and biting is in their nature just as with any other animal that has strong teeth. Whether it's a snake, a shark, a horse, or even a cat. But they'll never bite you without reason and a lot of times it's just because of a misunderstanding. So let's stop the stigma and remember that every piece of wildlife matters.